stretching from the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific Ocean, Nicaragua in Central America is a nation full of history. Today, it maintains a deep connection with its past while simultaneously playing host to an exciting and vibrant culture. The land itself is equally grand, and soon after arriving, it becomes very clear why this magical place is known as the land of lakes and volcanoes. Join me as we discover some incredible places of the Pinoneros for a spectacular taste of history. Wow, spectacular. Nicaraguan cuisine is like none other. Many other Central American nations might lay claim because maybe they have more reputation in the United States, but Nicaraguan cuisine is unique. The plantain, the banana, the rice was brought in, but the rice agriculture is abundant. The red bean, the white corn, unique high protein content and unique for our tamal, for our tortilla, for our pinol. That's why we are Los Pinoleros, the Nicaraguenses, the people of the white cornmeal, because we lay pride in our red beans, in our white corn, in our verdant agriculture. Nicaraguans are closely tied to their foods, which blends flavors from their pre-Columbian roots to their Spanish colonial influence. Dishes like gallo pinto, a white rice and bean sauteed in onion and oil, is a simple delight and a breakfast staple throughout the region. Nicknamed piñoleros for a traditional cornmeal drink, Nicaraguans take pride in their culinary traditions, now considered typical in many parts of Central America and the Caribbean region. White corn is a common ingredient in many dishes throughout the country and is the key element when preparing their tortillas, which are always prepared by hand over a slow fire. If you never had tortillas made with white corn flour like that, you do not know what you're missing. Mmm, mucho gusto. Very nice. This little snack she's preparing for me is called quesillo. Simply made with mozzarella-like cheese, marinated onions, and cream. This, along the classic cacao drink called tiste, served in a beautiful cup, is quintessential Nicaragua. Muchas gracias. Tiste, along with the quesillo, is like a marriage made in heaven. Oh. Wow, you can taste the cacao. Now this drink has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. A true culinary taste of Nicaragua's history. And here, at Mi Viejo Ranchito, they strive to create the culinary past of Nicaragua, so I'm dying to taste more classics like beef tongue. So the beef tongue is a very, very complicated dish because it takes a lot of advanced preparation. They start off with butter in a pan. Next, they put onions that are coarsely cut. Sweat them down a little until they start to become translucent, what we call glazing or caramelizing. Next, they add in the green peppers. It looks like a very easy recipe, but there is some real technique to it. Then, we add the two slices of tongue into the pan, which is pre-boiled, the outer skin gets peeled, then it gets sliced up. Worcestershire sauce gets added to the pan. The chef then deglazes the mixture with white rum, and then comes something very unique, which I haven't seen in a very long time. They deglaze the entire pan with Coca-Cola, believe it or not. The Coca-Cola here in Nicaragua is a little different because they use cane sugar and lots of it. It is much sweeter than the Coca-Cola you would find in America. Next, the chef adds capers, adds the raisin. The capers add acidity, where the raisins add sweetness and everything balances out very well. Now, in this recipe, the chef adds straight tomato ketchup. This will also add a sweetness to the dish. The chef now lets everything simmer away. It takes five to eight minutes to get all the flavors penetrating the tongue. This tongue, 
and much of Nicaraguan cuisine is served with a classic side dish called tostones, which are twice fried plantains. You can have it many ways. You can serve it with white rice, twice fried plantains. In most places you go to here in Nicaragua that you find any kind of a salsa, everybody has their own, own variety. This one happens to be just onions and chili in there. And then you have some refried beans right here, pureed. And then the tongue, no fat, no nothing, no tissue, no muscle. It's just clean. The tongue itself is a gigantic muscle to begin with. People always tell me, well, how, how come you like tongue so much? I said, have you ever had it? The most people only realize tongue when they go to a Jewish deli and have a tongue sandwich for smoked tongue. In my house growing up, we had tongue at least every couple of weeks. Done very similar to that sauce. The difference is my late wife Gloria with orange juice, and if I could find bitter oranges, orange agri in there to give it even better of a kick. But it's awesome. Tongue adapts to whatever flavor you give it. So if you would cook the tongue by itself, you wouldn't maybe eat it with horseradish or mustard. That's why you make a very powerful sauce to go along with it. This is the encebollado. I don't know why we lost our love for tongue and why even out of style. You should have tongue all the time, it's beautiful. It has so much flavor, it's so easy to eat, it has no crystal, no fat, no nothing. It's just beautiful. Another classic Nicaraguan dish is the Corazon Asada, which is roasted beef heart. To start, most importantly, you need to find an expert butcher that can fillet the heart properly so it's edible, because you can't eat the arteries. The beef heart gets marinated for a couple of days in a combination of olive oil, red wine, garlic, onions, and some pepper. Once an order comes in, the chef places the heart directly on the grill. The chef then puts a glaze on it, which is made out of olive oil and a bunch of top secret seasonings. It's glazed over and over again, while the heart gets flipped from side to side. This process is very lengthy, and anyone who knows how to cook a heart knows it's not completely soft. It's not like the tongue, for instance. Okay, thank you. Look at that. Beautiful blade, huh? Look at that. In my discovery of all kind of great Nicaraguan foods, this was a very important one for me. An acquired taste by all definition, because heart, it needs a lot of preparation, but you also have to understand if you order it, how to eat it. Grease the lime on it. Chile. All right, put this on the heart. Now, when I cut into the heart, take a look at that. It's again completely lean. Mm, beautiful. It's very flavorful. Again, no fat at all. It's a big muscle. So here with tostones, some rice on the side. I can't get it nowhere else, so <laughs> I have to come back. From the bottom of my heart, I sank the stuff that showed me the cuisine of Nicaragua from the past. Behind me is the Cathedral of Granada dating back as far as 1583. Granada, Nicaragua was the first colonial capital of the Spanish Empire and one of the very first European cities in mainland America. Founded in 1524 and named after the ancient Spanish city of Granada, this bustling town has always been a center of commerce and trade. While Nicaragua has been independent from Spain since 1821, and its own unique culture has developed over time, there are many prominent reminders of its colonial past. Park Central in Granada is known for its outstanding vigneron, which is one of Nicaragua's famous street food. Happens to be my family's favorite as well. It's served traditionally on a banana leaf. Then she adds on the pre-cooked yuca, a little bit of salt, then goes the pork grind, one or two pieces, depending how big a portion they make. And here, as a special treat, the one today, they serve me a little bit of adobo pork, which is basically pork that's marinated in anato. And then what brings this whole thing together 
is the salad that goes on top. Hey, muchas gracias. Mira, 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 look at that. Oh gosh, can't wait to get in there. This is one of the best street foods in all of the Americas. I am convinced. I've been eating this for a long, long time. Wow. <laughs> it's just so spectacular. So basically when you eat it, you mix it all together, your yucca, a little, little salad on top. By all accounts, this dish was invented right here in Granada and people travel far to come here. I remember coming here with my wife Gloria, far away just to come here to eat Vingerong and I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I, want, I want to experience this unbelievable dish. God knows when I get it next time. The city of Granada sits on the shores of Lake Nicaragua from which the San Juan River flows over 100 miles into the Caribbean Sea. In the colonial era, this river was a well-traveled route for pirates. And in more recent history, during the California Gold Rush of the 1800s, Cornelius Vanderbilt had a commercial shipping route from the east to west coast of the United States. This convenient passage went from the Caribbean Sea through Lake Nicaragua and into the Pacific Ocean via a narrow 12 mile wide isthmus. It was an important place for international global commerce, travel, as well as the Rockefellers and the Carnegies played out some of their robber baron war by trying to control this as an international canal for trade versus the Panama Canal. It was an ideal trade route for prospectors who wished to avoid crossing through the Midwest of the United States where the Lakota and the Sioux tribes um, rightfully so, caused a lot of trouble to the prospectors. When traveling to this area, it is impossible to miss the island of Omotepe, made out of two volcanoes, Concepcion and Madeira. These volcanoes, which sit right in the middle of Lake Nicaragua, are just two of the 19 active volcanoes that make up this country's unique landscape. Lake Nicaragua is the largest lake in Central America and the only lake containing oceanic life, including sharks and swordfish. It is believed that a volcanic eruption formed Lake Nicaragua and nearby Lake Managua, which were originally part of the Pacific Ocean Bay. One of the unique features of Lago Nicaragua is that it has over 300 isletas, small islands, and these tiny plots of land scattered around all over. Species like the Ora Pendula with their unique songs and spider monkeys with their curious attention live in harmony with local families. Fresh water fish also find their home in the waters of the lake, such as the Quapote, which adapted gradually as the salt water lake turned fresh over centuries and centuries. We refer to the phenomenon as environmental adaptation. That natural selection has its selective features, meaning that certain species that have the appropriate genetics will adapt to be able to produce fertile offspring. So we see something like the fish, the guapote, one that is adapted to Lake Nicaragua, that has the, the, the perfect blend of attributes that allows for it to produce fertile offspring into the next generation. Here, in the outskirts of the Lago Nicaragua, we found this unique place that specializes in cooking guapote. Each fish is cooked to order. And so, the way this dish is done, you take the guapote, descale them, cleans them real good, penetrate the skin four times, and then it gets salt and the dusting of the pinol. Pinol is a white cornmeal, a big skillet under fire with vegetable oil. Cooks it about four minutes on each side, about eight minutes, approximately the size of the fish. At the same time, there's another pot on the fire, which we call here in Nicaragua, el cebollado. It's onion, peppers, tomato, it's deglazed with vinegar, salt, pepper, and her recipe here 
incorporates a little bit of ketchup last moment, which quite frankly I found it very pleasant. So the sauce goes over the fish last moment before the waiter picks it up. Whatever the lake has in minerals manifests itself in the meat of the fish. And quite frankly, the interesting part of Nicaragua is people are never in a hurry. You don't run in there and want to eat in five minutes. No, you come here and you take your time. Wow, look at that. Gosh, look at that pescado. Amazing, Qué huh? rico, que lindo, yeah. Look at that, Doc. Beautiful. How lucky are we, man? Cheers. This is my son, Patrick. This has helped me tremendously on trying to get this episode together and discovering the different flavors of Nicaraguan culture and food. This place has a lot of significance from the heart because my late wife Gloria and Patrick as a little kid we came to this exact spot to eat this unusual fish that you're going to tell me all about it, which is most people have never even heard about this guapote. Yeah, guapote frito, man. This is the only place you can come and get it. We used to always choose this location because we're right next to the water. It's basically a, a largemouth bass, but this variety of fish evolved in the lake as the coasts receded from the sea. But getting it here, fresh caught off the boat, Usually my mother would come and she would ask the cook to see the fish before she would actually let them cook it. I did the same today. That's, there you go. Oh, wow. Good? Just like the old days? Yeah. It is beautiful. Discovering the different flavors of Nicaragua, this is a must stop. Because what you get here, you, can get, you cannot duplicate any place else. It's impossible. It's amazing. So I really love trying to dig out the meat right behind the eyes, and then the cheek meat, you know, right there under the eye. You know, this is even a cultural experience. Most folks in America don't get to eat a whole fish. The flavor of this fish is unique because it's not over-seasoned, it's not overpowered with anything, so it's the natural flavor of the fish coming out of the lake. So the meat of the fish itself is just what makes the dish. I mean, it's funny to say, but it, like, it doesn't taste like fish. No, it doesn't. It has no fishy flavor. It's super fresh, light, and you see the meat is so beautiful, flaky, white, and it has no exterior flavors. Some people might say that they don't really like the taste of fish, and I'll tell them they've never really had a freshly caught, freshly cooked, amazing fish like this. So Patrick, thanks to come all the way up from our beach to have a, a, a traditional fish with me like the good old days, so I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Ed. It's been awesome, I love it. I love spending time with you, talking about the good old days, and knowing that the fish will be here and has never always, changed. Same as it always was. <laughs> Keep it simple. The lake's the same, the fish the same, Patrick is the same, I'm not too much the same. <laughs> You're better, better with age. <laughs> Located between Managua and Granada, Nicaragua's traditional capital of Masaya is considered the heart of Nicaraguan folklore and crafts. The Comejuca, or yuca eaters in English, is the nickname for the natives here. El Mercado Viejo, or the old market in Masaya, is an artisan market that still exists in its colonial era structure. In a tradition dating back hundreds of years, the local markets are filled with native artisans, selling everything from ceramics to the famous Nicaraguan rocking chairs. It's also a great place for a classic dish known as bajo, a traditional beef and plantain stew that is slow cooked underground in banana leaves. I'm here with Estella in the old market of Masaya. Estella is going to show me one of the typical, typical foods of Nicaragua. It's called the bajo, which goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. I've had it many times before, but I've never had it here and it looks absolutely spectacular. The flavors that come out of this gigantic pot, that is truly a taste of history. So the start of making this assembly at three o'clock in the morning, because it's got to cook four hours down. What's unique, it's cooked in layers, as you can see. And also, obviously, a lot of the flavor comes by using fatty meat, because they've been here so long, they know how much they're selling. When it's finished, it's finished. Una vez se acabó, se acabó, no? Sí, ya solo se mantiene a fuego lento. So first, she's putting down the yucca, then she put down the, the plant and stuff, the ripe one and the green one. Now goes on top the beef. And actually, you can order that 
with fatty beef or lean beef, either way you want it. Okay, so it's Le colocamos su ensalada, mm -hmm. sí. It's cabbage, it's carrots and some onion, just salt. And then on top of it, she's putting cooked onions. And now she's going to find a piece of tomato. Y su respectivo tomate. Look at that. Look at that. Aquí tiene, chef. Mira, yo soy el chef, trabajo en todo el mundo. Me seguro no puedo hacer eso exactamente de ustedes. Su bajo es bien conocido en, en, en todo el Nicaragua. Sí. Tal, tal vez todo el mundo, no sé. Okay. Sí. <laughs> oh. Wow. Solamente por la yuca. La yuca tiene el sabor del carne, de los plátanos. Sí. Soy maravilloso. Oh. Fantastic. When I'm finished eating that, I take a nap. Siesta, ah, no? Sí, queda ya. No, sí. ganas de dormir. <laughs> you cannot imagine the flavor of this meat all cooked together with the yuca, and the platanos, and the flavors. And, oh, I can't even tell you. It is absolutely beautiful. The flavors, and again, it shows my belief less is always better. Few ingredients cooked together exactly makes it absolutely spectacular. Too bad you can just watch me eating because you all should be eating that. It's so spectacular. I gotta eat some more. Oh. As you know by now, Nicaraguans love their food, but nothing is more popular than the fritanga you see behind me. Fritanga is essentially a private home turned restaurant barbecue. Cooked over smoky charcoal grills, each place has their own unique recipes for the proteins like chicken and beef, as well as favorites like fried plantains done just right. This communal atmosphere is a staple of any great Nicaraguan city. Thomas, mucho. con mucho placer. Costaré mucho entender más que pasa aquí con su fritanga. Nosotros somos un pequeño negocio nuevo que iniciamos, uh, vamos a cumplir alrededor de dos años, Toda la gente en Granada recomienda esta fritanga sobre nosotros. Sí. He has love in his food and a lot of secret recipes that only he has. Special sauces he makes, different things. He says people come all the way from Managua out here to partake in his fritanga because they have such a great approach to their food. When you come to fritanga, you're singing the same philosophy as I've been telling you throughout Nicaragua, less is better. And obviously the quality speaks for itself that I'm going to find out soon because I'm going to eat everything that's here. <laughs> the normal back of the house of any restaurant is usually off limits. Here, it's complete reverse. Because when you come in, you right in what's the prep area. So you're invited into the heart of a normal restaurant. It obviously has the beef, which is marinated and cooked slowly over charcoal. Then he has chicken, again, very slowly roasted. He has beef ribs and he has pork. He serves all of it with dried plantain and sweet plantains. And he tops it all off with a very finely shredded, slow, with nothing more than a little salt and vinegar. So he has what I consider a niche market that people in Granada that are looking for something unique and different, they come right here, eat it here, or take it out, and it's open late at night. As he told me, I stay open until I run out of food. <laughs> it's a good philosophy. So obviously they have a big menu here. I choose the beef, which is gracias. And this is my favorite over here. I've seen them marinating it. Okay, let me try this one here. Wow. Mmm, lots of flavor. There's a little bit of a slow on top. Mm -hmm. As Thomas, the owner, explained to me, he wanted to be very special than so many other fritangas, and that's why he's concentrating on few things extraordinarily executed, such as this unbelievable beef that is marinated in a very special sauce. It tastes absolutely spectacular. Very appropriate that I'm finishing my discovery of Nicaragua and the foods of Nicaragua right here in the fritanga in Granada with this beautiful food because it so much underscores my philosophy of food. Less is better. It doesn't get better than that. From Nicaragua for a taste of history.